<laughs> now, I'll be very brief. I talked about fake ministers of God. And now, a lot of you have told me, Mimi, nile nyanganyo bibi. Mimi, nile nyanganyo buwana. You call yourself a minister of God. You stand in the pulpit. And you preach. At the same time, someone comes and tells you the problem they're having in their marriage and instead of you resolving their problem and helping them to resolve you take a step of taking one of the spouses be it a man or the wife let me just ask a question and uh, if I offend anyone I'm very sorry where did the preachers of the days gone where have they gone you used to go to church and you'll be told first for three, four days, let's go to the mountains and pray for the whatever you want. But today everything is all about money. Today is all about Mungu wa Mesema Siju Fanyanini. God has said you do this. Why have you, be, uh, have you decided to manipulate people? Why have you decided even to matchmake people? You are matchmaking people, they get married, these people are not even compared. Ata hawaskizani. And then you're telling them God has said so. And when the marriage fails, you either take the woman or the man. I was so shocked with the men that came in my inbox to tell me, so upon my marriage was broken by a minister of God. The same same minister ule alitushikanisha ndoa. The same same minister ule alituambia our marriage can work. Today akona bibi yangu. Today my kids wanamuita mbaka dad. I feel so bad. Then what, what preaching are you preaching to us? What gospel are you bringing to us? If you are there and you know you've broken someone's marriage and you're a minister, can you repent and let go of that partner, be it a man or a woman? And I'm not talking this because of only men who have taken people's wives. Even women who stand in the pulpit, they claim they are ministers of God, yet behind the curtains they are sleeping with husbands of other women in the church. And that woman is, is given, uh, is silenced, not to talk, not to say anything in the church. Eh? Kila siku mnenanga fellowship, ni fellowship gani mnenanga privately kwa nyumba? Which fellowship is that? You know, I am so, 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 I am so, so angry and disappointed because I, nowadays I don't even know which preacher, which minister to, uh, to, to believe or even to trust. Where is our generation going? Where is it going? Why are even our marriages failing? I've come to realize it's not about the, the challenges that people are, fitting, are facing in, the, in, in their family at home. It's what maybe some ministers, and I'm, I'm not saying all of them, but some ministers, a percentage of some ministers have gotten involved in these marriages. And at the end of the day, these marriages break. And you who is allowing a minister to take advantage of your, mar <laughs> Sorry, of your marriage and giving you wrong advice don't allow that and like i've always said in every relationship in every marriage if both of you can never solve your problem don't expect a third party to come and solve your problem never because this that party was never there when you guys were getting involved to each other were falling in love with each other this that party was not there this that party was not there when you decided to walk down the aisle then why are you involving a third party when you're having problems why in, involving someone who maybe even has not even tasted one percent of marriage to come and advise you ministers of god that's what i can i can call you I am so disappointed and ashamed that apart from even uh, matchmaking people, you are the same people who have destroyed most marriages. Hmm? Just because he or she came to you for help, but you took advantage and now you've broken the marriages. It is very bad. And you silence the other partner not to talk it to the church. So stop it. Stop it. And you that have allowed that minister of God to manipulate you, to put ideas in your head that you leave your marriage 
and go and anakueka ama anaku, uh, whatever he's doing to you or she's doing to you you're not doing the right thing you're not doing the right thing and i would not lie to you you're not doing the right thing and it is very bad and you better stop whatever you're doing and come back to your senses and bring back your family and work out your family i know no family or no marriage is perfect but both of you can make it perfect both of you can make your marriage a bed of roses don't involve a third party and even if you're involving a third party involve a third party who is very fair not coming to put ideas into your head i've already passed my message because i was shocked apart from the ministers who are taking advantage and defiling people i came to realize when i read my inbox i could not believe almost 50 percent of men who wrote me messages telling me my marriage was broken by a minister of god our pastor yet he's a, today they are living with my wife today i'm a kombolea bibiangu pahali nyumba really a, a lady will also tell me the same my husband was taken away by uh, by a minister of God who who even alitu shikanisha. He is the one who even was in a hurry to help us get a divorce, not knowing that uh, he had an agenda to go and, and and stay with my wife, or he had an agenda to go and stay with my husband. I feel so bad. I feel so ashamed because I wonder what gospel are you preaching to us and every Sunday you are the pulpit every day morning lunch and evening devotion what gospel what gospel are you telling us what gospel are you preaching to us I feel so bad yet we are raising a generation that we want to have a strong generation but with the kind of ministers of God we have and they're the ones who are there they're supposed to lead us in Christianity they're still the same people who are taking us astray i feel so bad you're there you're listening to me so Pan is here to tell you stop it because karma will catch up on you and you that have allowed that minister of god to take advantage of you you've left your husband and gone to stay with him you've left your wife and gone to stay with that minister of of a woman or, or a man you're not doing the right thing even before god you are you are sinned before your children you're not doing the right thing what kind of children do you expect that you're raising do you expect them to respect you in the future do you expect them to call you a good mom or a good dad think twice before you act and also to my to my viewer you know we, we, let's let's call a spade a spade and a spoon a spoon i don't know where this this mother and father thing came at everybody every, every minister of god do your pastor you want to meet your dad your mom your dad and your mom are your biological parents the minute you start giving them these names they take advantage of you. Hmm? Oh, I'm going to my daddy. This is my mommy, my friend. Your mommy is the one who gave birth to you. Your daddy is the one who brought you up and raised you. This is just a minister of God. And the minute you start giving him or her those names, and that is why these people take advantage of you. That's why tomorrow by the time you realize who you, you've already been drained. If he's a pastor, call him a pastor. If he's an evangelist, muite evangelist. If he's an apostle, call him an apostle. Stop nicknaming them these sweet, sweet names. Hmm? And then tomorrow you start crying. He was my spiritual steward. My daddy did this to me. You are, what? you are calling him daddy and mommy, pampering him. Why would he not take advantage of you? Hmm? Where did, by the way, where did these names come? Someone, can you just answer me? How do you call your minister of God? Because me, I can't call someone mommy, daddy. Why? She never breastfed me. Hmm? He never raised me. We've met me being an adult. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm? We've met when I'm being an adult. We've met me going to their church. I'll call them the church of God. And then now you start nicknaming them mommy, daddy. You stand even in the pulpit saying, oh, I thank my mommy, my daddy. Huh? At the back of their mind now, you've called me mommy and daddy. At the end of the service, I've already scripted what to tell you. Just think twice before you act.
before you call someone a name ask yourself am i doing the right thing will this name bring consequences later what will this name lead to there are so many questions so many why do you call your house a manager a manager or a house help because that is her work she knows what she's doing there are boundaries the same same boundaries between you and your employee or your employer is the same boundary between you and that minister of god so that you avoid so many regrets later i hope i've made myself clear and i hope each one of you knows now how to relate with these people and how to act and what to call them that's all for today goodbye and god bless you once again don't forget to hit the subscribe button comment like and share until next time goodbye